Imagine it's 1857 and you've come up with a revolutionary idea, a concept which challenges the very foundations of how we think and communicate. A thought so groundbreaking that if shared widely could reshape society itself. But it's 1857. There's no Wi-Fi, no telephone, and your fastest mode of transport is a horse. How would you tell the world this incredible idea? Well, the only way to reach a large audience is to write a book. But even then, only 10% of adults in Europe could actually read. And writing a book isn't as easy as opening up Google Docs on one tab and ChatGPT on the other and copying and pasting into a document. No, it's 1857. You'll have to write out each page by hand and only then can you take your carefully written manuscript to the print shop where you'll have to convince the typesetter that your book is worth the hours of labor required to print it. The typesetter's work isn't as simple as pushing a button. He has to take tiny metal blocks called sorts, which are stored in cases where the uppercase holds the capital letters and the lowercase holds the minuscule letters, which is where they get the name from, assemble them into words, paint ink on them, going letter by letter, page by page, until the entire book is printed. Yet, there's still a limitation that haunts you. No matter how well the typesetter assembles each word, the printed page can only capture words, not your voice. The tone, the emotion, the pauses, the rise and fall of your speech, all of it is lost to the silent confines of ink and paper. The typesetter looks across the print shop at a pile of densely packed paper ready to be used. But he wonders if something more could be recorded and preserved through time. He wonders if one day people could not only read the words of their ancestors, but also hear them. This typesetter was called Edouard Leon Scott de Martinville, and he invented the phonograph. Edouard knew that sound was just a wave of vibrations traveling through the air, so he wanted some way of capturing those vibrations and recording them on paper. To capture the sound, he used a membrane, which is just a thin material shaped like a cup. This membrane vibrates ever so slightly when sound waves hit it, so Edouard attached a pin to the end which would vibrate with the cup. Now when Edouard spoke to the cup, the pin would vibrate according to the sound waves that were coming out of his mouth. Now all he needed was a sheet of paper which moves at a constant rate along the pin to capture its vibrations with time. I'm now going to show you how you can build your own phonograph at home. All you need is a plastic cup, some scissors, a drawing pin, some tape, some cardboard, empty toilet roll, a spinny thing, I'm using a fan, and some tin foil. First, I'm going to remove the cover from this fan. Then I'm going to take some tin foil and tape it to my toilet roll. Now I'm going to tape the tin foil roll to my fan. Now we have some spinning tin foil. Now I'm going to poke my drawing pin through the bottom of the plastic cup. It should be in a way so that the end of the pin is coming out from the bottom, like so. <laughs> this will be my membrane. Now I'm going to make a stand for this so that I can hold it just here. Now I've made a stand for it using cardboard by just taking a semicircle out of the top and then taping the cup to it. But you want the cardboard to rest on the tin foil to apply some pressure for it to write. And now I have an analog microphone or a phonograph, but you have to speak quite loudly in order for it to pick up your voice. Edouard could record his voice using this machine, but he couldn't play it back to himself, so he had no idea whether this thing actually worked. He died with little recognition for his work because at the time, no one had much use for his invention. But today, scientists have analyzed the plate he used to record the sound waves and have reconstructed the first recordings of a human voice ever taken. All right, all right, that's not actually what he said. This is the first recording of the human voice ever taken. That was Edouard singing Eau Claire de Lune, an old French folk song. Thankfully, modern microphones can pick up a much higher sound resolution and quality. Just like the phonograph, a modern microphone contains a diaphragm which vibrates when sound hits it. But instead of tracing vibrations onto a surface, this diaphragm converts them into electrical signals. 
It does this using the principle of electromagnetic induction, which was discovered by Michael Faraday in 1831. The principle of electromagnetic induction states that when a coil of wire moves through a magnetic field, a current is produced in the coil. So if we attach a coil to the diaphragm and then put a magnet inside the coil, every time the coil moves, an electrical signal is produced in the wire. This fluctuation in electrical current can be amplified and then saved in a file which can be played back and shared giving us the ability to speak to people across the planet. So now you know how a calculator records sound. So you can piss off. If you want to support the channel, hit the join button to become a member or click this video if you want to see more.